Good evening, everyone. My name is Ola Inka Avemu. I have a lot to say, okay? But this is just introduction. And um, I think that when the time is right, things will fall in place. And people will naturally start talking about things that, you know, that are not actually very comfortable to talk about before. So I see that this topic, racism, in Ireland, generally, people are getting more comfortable to talk about it, unlike before. And I think it's because we are all coming to that realization that it is time. We are all coming to the realization of the effect, you know, the, the, the negative effect it has on not just the, the victims, but also on everyone around them. So I'm an assistant professor in nursing. I work in UCD. Um, trained in Nigeria, 13 years of experience in nursing, midwifery, and public health, but I'm only practicing as a general nurse in Ireland for some reasons that we already know. <laughs> okay, so, um, but my interest in this topic, so to say, it's not far fetched. It's something that affects me personally and affects my community. I'm the president of the Association of Nigerian Nurses in Ireland and also the executive director for the Federation of African Nurses and Midwives in Ireland. Yes, probably most people here might not have heard of us as well. So because it's still, we are still trying to be visible and to come up and to provide that support. And I remember when I came to Ireland seven years ago, um, I I was I came in with so much joy and enthusiasm. I came in with, you know, so much dreams. But I tell you, within several months, everything almost changed just because of some discrimination issues with my employer then and i was tied down so to say i was meant to be tied down to this employer that wanted to uh, uh, you know exploit me and you know bully me into staying why i could have just gone to another employer so we'll talk more about this restriction when it comes to work permits thankfully uh there's a, there was a latest uh, update about that that you are not restricted to work with an employer you know, uh, for two years, you can move. But so my interest started from that and I fought through it on my own. I, I had limited support and even from unions, lim very limited support, some failed promises. And I had to stay off work for nine months. I had to stay off work for nine months. I left a three and a half year old girl and a one year old son back in Nigeria. And I was here by myself. My husband was in Nigeria, my mother, vulnerable. And I was here without a job because an employer refused to give me reference for another job, just simply because they felt like you're leaving us. But I couldn't stay because you could not provide me an enabling environment to work with you. So, and I successfully went through that. I eventually got, got a job. And since then, I said, I will be the voice for every other nurses that will come into Ireland. I will be the voice. I will stand in the gap, irrespective of what, because I felt like I went through it and I came out, you know, well. So we started the Association of Nigerian Nurses and then this year we launched the Federation of African Nurses in, in, in Ireland, and midwives as well. So joining UCD, I, you know, I've always been involved with EDI, anything, diversity, inclusion. I know it's becoming like a, a cliche now, the, the, you know, just saying EDI, EDI. And I got the opportunity to put in for, a, a, you know, funding, which we're working on, and Dr. Ebenezer, on that project as well. We are trying to co-create uh, educational interventions for anti-racism, you know, anti-racism educational interventions. So I'm really happy that this is coming up now and these conversations are starting. Actually, tomorrow I'm speaking again on this similar topic, marginalization in the caring profession. So let's get it going. Let's let it out. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I think some of the things I wanted to say has been mentioned. So I'm just going to really focus on nurses because that's my area of, you know, niche nurses, racism in healthcare, particularly uh, towards nurses. So I'll start first from the perspective of a patient to healthcare worker or to a nurse. So there have been a lot of reports and I've experienced it as well, maybe not as much as other people, 
where the patients are being racist or discriminatory towards the nurses who are, you know, of color or, you know, due to race. There are issues of like using racial slur, verbal abuse, you know, even refusal of treatment, like you, because it's a black nurse, no, I don't want her. And this is not a matter of maybe the patient is disoriented or, you know, have Alzheimer's. This is a patient that is compass mentors that has a capacity. So you just realize that that's, that's, the, that's the start, you know, like, because I want to render the care, nurses want to care, but if a patient is refusing my care as because of my color, then, it, you know, it sets the tone for the day for that nurse and it causes frustration as well. So that's one thing. And there's a lot of issues around stereotyping as well, microaggression, you know, but I, I then that's for the patient. Then I'm going to come to the nurses now, nurse to nurse or the management or in my role as the president, I would say that, and I always say this, there's no day that I won't get a test message, an email from another nurse complaining or, you know, venting. Some people just want to talk about their experiences, what they go through, because it's so heavy. Some nurses don't want to go to work because of that, and they're afraid to even talk. So starting from IELTS, like English competency, so I'm going to break this down very quickly. I think racism, there's an undertone of racism when it comes to the English language proficiency that healthcare professionals, particularly nurses, have to take. Now, especially for people from English-speaking country, like Nigeria, I'm trained all my life from nursery school. I was trained in English. Like you can, English, even to speak my native language is, we call it vernacular. We are not allowed to speak our native language in classes. And now we are being, we are, we are being made to write an English profi proficiency test just because they feel like you are not good enough in English. And I really believe that there is that racist, racist, or you know, undertone even with that, with the migration policies around yeah, IELTS or English language proficiency. So I'm going to leave that there. Then the other thing now, when we come into practice, patient allocation. These are some of the things that I, you know, I've gotten from nurses as well. That some nurses feel like they are being allocated with to maybe a room or you know a, a ward with the highest, you know. Or let call it now every let me say every workload we have patients who are really dependent but we find that most of the time people of color are allocated to those areas the most difficult areas and i think there is a lot of discrimination around that as well and this has some ratio or you know based on color competency i know we talk about competency that sometimes we we, the, 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 we are looked down as if we don't know enough we're not, we're not competent enough. The trust, every activity, every action is questionable. Like, it's as if you, you know, you have that second guessing. You have somebody shadowing you everywhere. I've had to talk to a, a manager that don't micromanage me because I feel like you're micromanaging me. You're ask, you know, second guessing everything I do, you know, so it's, it's discriminatory and it has a whole lot of effect on our confidence as well. I've had nurses who had to say, I don't even think I can work. I don't even think I know what to do. It rubs on their confidence, honestly. So, and sometimes, yeah, thank you so much, Kalen. It makes us feel like we are the novice nurse. But remember that these nurses came to Ireland with a lot of experiences. And I just wrote a book, New Not a Novice Nurse, from that experience as well. Like, with 12 years of nursing in Nigeria, and then you are here and made, made to feel like you know nothing. Fine, I know there's a place of regulation of, you know, you want to make sure that we are providing quality of care. Then provide the support, not second guessing or always thinking that this person is not competent enough. Uh, the other thing uh, is about leadership position. Now, most of the time when I get opportunity to speak or attend a conference, I look around me. Sometimes I'm the only black nurse in the OB, in, you know, in the whole hall. And I feel like, what is wrong? Does it mean that we are not capable enough? Maybe somebody like me, I just put myself out there. Either you like it or not. Just, you know, no, no, like you have to like my face. But it's it comes with support. Like even opportunities that are there, we don't get our opportunities. Nurses don't get, you know, black nurses or people of color don't get the opportunities for growth. They are not supported. No mentor. 
no sponsors you know there's a difference between mentorship and, and sponsors if somebody to call your name like this person no sp no sponsor and it's really really challenging you know you feel like you're not growing and nurses are leaving they are leaving nursing even in ireland i've had nurses that say i think i'll go to tech i have a nurse now who is working in tech left nursing because I feel like i don't even think i'm accepted here all right sometimes you look uh, see the other black angry nurse. Somebody has mentioned that to me before. Why do you always look angry? I don't look angry it's because I'm frustrated. And then you're labeled as the rebel nurse because you are the one talking. I tell you a, a, something like a joke. When somebody says that you are very bold, I used to think it was a compliment. <laughs> and then I would say, oh yeah, I'm very bold. Until somebody told me, no, it's not a compliment. They mean that you're coming out like rude. Or like you, you are the outspoken one, right? And somebody had to tell me one day that I think are you the prominent nurse? That means you like I'm being I'm I'm picked or you know. So it's it's a whole lot of you don't you can't talk. You just have to go with it. And when you talk, you are labelled. And when you are labelled, you're not you know you are not supported. If you come out for funding, I'm doing my PhD. And I'm in my fourth year, but I've applied for sponsorship. You know funding three times i never got it but there could be other reasons for that but these are the challenges that comes with it and there's this issue i mentioned about work visa restriction that you are meant to stay with one employer either you like it or not either you're bullied or not you're exploited or not you have to stay and i believe that you know the government are doing something around that let me quickly mention this about a recognition of prior experience so as it is, if you come from, if you have 10 years, 20 years of experience, once you come to Ireland, you have to start as a staff nurse. But I think that is very, very discriminatory because nothing is the same everywhere. It's only maybe the equipment, the technology, or, you know, the patients that we have to nurse that differs, but nursing principles is the same. So why should I start from staff nurse? It took me seven years because I was lecturing back in Nigeria to get back to the academics. And I, 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 I know that that involves a lot of resilience for my part. But people, nurses need support. Black nurses need support. And I'm going to wrap it up by talking about the latest. There's an independence review of, you know, cultural review in NMC in the UK. I don't know if anybody has seen that. It was all over Twitter. And that independent review actually revealed that up to 16 nurses are waiting fitness to practice in the UK under the um, NMC, the Nurse Ambulatory Council, committed suicide while waiting. 16. And if you go on Twitter now, you will find them, the Black Nurses Association, they are all every day outside protesting because of this. And so many evil, let me could, you know, pardon my language, like cultural practices that were buried, you know, within the nmc so i i think that a lot some most of the time we've been silenced not to talk about this because it's not comfortable people don't want to listen to it you know even if you're trying to talk communicate you're not being listened to to understand you're being you're just being attacked like they always have a response even before you start talking so i think this is an awakening for all of us and i've been having this conversation even with the north Sea military board of ireland and other 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 stakeholders like it's time to start talking about this and it is not we are not angry we just want changes so i'm more pressed towards finding solutions because i say that anybody can be racist either white or black or you know anybody can be racist but we need to understand do you even know the difference between racism being racist and being bullied because sometimes it's, we can assume that it is bullying but it is not let's call a spade a spade and that involves that includes calling racism what it is racism thank you